In our last video, we talked about the income statement method for setting up an allowance for doubtful accounts and a bad debt expense for the year. Uh, in this video, we're going to do the exact same problem, but we're going to do the balance sheet method. So rather than taking a percentage of sales, we look at taking a percentage of receivables. Now, this is kind of a simple example. More often, you'll get an aging of receivables list, and you'll look at, you know, your freshest receivables you'll collect most of, and your older receivables, uh, more of them will, will become bad debts. But whenever we estimate bad debts based on a percentage of our accounts receivable, we are doing the balance sheet method. Uh, and let's go ahead and do it. Uh, so it says on December 31st, well, it's the same question as the one we did in our previous video, uh, and the same information, just this sentence at the bottom is, is slightly different. Uh, so we need to record the adjusting journal entry. Again, remember the purpose of this. At our fiscal year end, we're not sure which customers are going to pay and which aren't. We have to make an estimate because some surely won't pay, and we can do it either basing it on a percentage of sales or a percentage of our accounts receivable. Obviously, the older accounts receivable is more likely to be uncollectible. Um, okay, let's do our adjusting journal entry. Well, again, if they give you this number, 20% of outstanding accounts receivable, we should figure out what that is. 20% times our accounts receivable, 77,000, is uh, 15,400. Okay, so when we took a percentage of sales, I'm going to scroll back up to that last problem. I said, okay, we took a percentage of our credit sales, 8,500, and I said, that's our bad debt expense. Great, that's the income statement method. Now we're doing the balance sheet method. When I take a percentage of a receivable, and it could be a list of receivables, uh, but when I total up that percentage of my receivables, I'm not calculating my dad debt, bad debt expense. I'm calculating the ending balance of my allowance. So this is the ending balance of my allowance for doubtful accounts. And it's a credit. Well, maybe I'll put that in brackets. The allowance is a contra asset account. Its natural state of existence is it's a credit account. So I've said my ending balance of my allowance has got to be uh, 15400 Let's take a look at our allowance. Just like we did last time, we're going to prepare a T account for the allowance. Our allowance started at a credit of 12000 I've just calculated its ending balance as 15400 credit. So let me just put that down here, 15,400, and that's a credit, and that's where it's got to end. So how do I get from 12,000 to 15,400? Well, I'm missing a number. There's sort of a number that needs to plug in here. And the missing number you can see has got to be missing a credit of 3,400. Okay, so I know I need to credit my allowance For 3400 again, if it's missing in a T account, the, the way to remedy that is to do a journal entry. So on December 31st, I'm going to credit, oops, December 31st, I'm going to credit my allowance for $3,400. Now, what's the related debit here? Well, let's go back up and look at what we did when we did the income statement method. We went debit bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful accounts. Same thing here. Debit bad debt expense, credit the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm getting lazy and just calling it the allowance, but uh, you may need to write out the whole the whole spiel there. I put bed debt expense. Bad debt expense is $3,400. So we've got a good journal entry again. Debit bad debt expense, credit the allowance, $3,400. So just to reiterate the difference, when we're doing the income statement method, as we did in the video prior to this, we said the amount we calculate is our bad debt expense, plug it into the journal entry. When we calculate a based on a percentage of outstanding accounts receivable, that amount we calculate is the ending balance of our allowance for doubtful accounts. That amount needs to go into a T account, and then we kind of work backwards to figure out our journal entry.
So again, I knew I started with 12,000 in my allowance. I knew I had to end with 15,400 credit balance. So to go from a 12,000 credit balance to a 15,400 credit balance, I credit it 3,400. Uh, 3, so I credit my allowance 3,400, debit bad debt expense 3,400. I've got a good entry. Now, what does this look like in terms of balance sheet presentation? Well, again, we should be getting in the habit of this. It's accounts receivable minus the allowance equals our net. Uh, I'll, I'll say it this way, our AR net. So what's our company's net accounts receivable? Well, let's figure it out. Our accounts receivable was 77000 The ending balance of our allowance is 15400 I, I don't want to tell you the number of times I've had students write 3400 in as this number, you know, write the amount of the journal. No, no, no. It's the ending balance of our allowance, and that's 15400 So 77000 minus 15,400 will give us the net amount of our accounts receivable. 77 minus 15,4 is 61,600. That's our net AR. That's the number that needs to appear on the financial statements beside our account receivable. So typically how this would look, again, is on the, on the front page of the balance sheet, you know, we'd have cash, accounts receivable, maybe some inventory and, and other assets, liability, shareholders equity. Well the accounts receivable that would appear on the face of the balance sheet would be 61,600. Then in the notes to the financial statements we would disclose this calculation. We would show that calculation how we arrived at the $61,600. But on the face of the balance sheet if we google our favorite company, uh, let me google, I, I don't even know, uh, uh, let's see. Oops, I probably shouldn't open my Gmail in front of everybody. Walmart financial statements. Um, if I Google them, let's find their balance sheet. Balance sheet. Total receivables net. Whoops, I zoomed in a little too far, but I think you can see right under cash, it says total receivables net. Well, what is it net of? It's net of their allowance for doubtful accounts. So we've shown our accounts receivable net. They say total receivables net, same difference. Now, if you looked into details in the notes to their financial statements, you would learn about what their allowance was, and uh, you could do some evaluation of that number. So again, the accounts receivable is the amount I'm, I'm legally owed. I, I'm owed 77 grand, but I know if I have a lot of customers that owe me money, not everybody pays. Because of it, I need to set up an allowance for those customers that don't pay. In this case, based on my estimate, based on my manager's estimate of 20% of, of outstanding accounts receivable, based on that, I think 15,400 of these dollars aren't coming in. I don't need to tell my shareholders I'm going to get 77 grand when I really don't think I am. I only think I'm going to get 61,600. That's the number I present on the face of my financial statements. That's my net accounts receivable. So now we've looked at the income statement method and the balance sheet method. In our last video, and it's going to be a shorty, we're going to learn how to write off accounts receivable.